Well, um, get cozy, folks, because it's a home show. Buckle up. <laughs> Ding. Buttercups. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Hardly Working, the show about life, love, and labor, hosted by the couple that works, plays, and stays together. I'm Kelly. And I'm SP, and it's a home show, baby. Yeah, that's right. From the TVA. That's right. And with my new TVA cup. Ear biscuits, my old ear biscuits cup from one of my other favorite podcasts. Yeah. It's a home show this week, which means we're at home. Yeah, it's drinking been, tea. It's been busy, busy, busy. Drinking the tea and spilling the tea. That's right. Um, I don't want everyone to feel like it's so mellow because we're at home, but it is cozy <laughs> and it is also late at night. It's later than we would normally be after shooting. dark. Just but, kidding. It's not, <laughs> Sorry. not yet. We'll get there one day, but, um, I know we've released an episode every single week forever, but we actually haven't shot the show in two weeks. So we have a lot of catching up to do as they say, including gigs for me walkthroughs and events and different stuff for you so much to talk about we've got stories we've got unpopular opinions kelly brought something too <laughs> but also it may just be a catching up kind of episode we'll see how it goes we'll see. by the way if this is your first episode or one of your first episodes welcome i don't know what the numbers were at before but thanks for everybody who's come over from tiktok thanks everybody who's gone to our tiktok we recently crossed eleven thousand followers on tiktok in literally a month so that felt amazing. Yeesh. And uh, if you ever want to say, hey, drop us a story and unpop your opinion, anything like that, you can hit us up on TikTok or Instagram at It's Hardly Working. So I just want to throw that out there. A little welcome to everybody. Anyway, wh- where do you want to jump in? <laughs> I got a big one, but I, w- I don't want to cut you off. Well, I mean, last time we spoke to the peoples. Yes, the peoples. <laughs> I don't know. Last time we spoke, truly. Yeah. <laughs> you and I three weeks ago. Yeah, uh, you were going to a little thing called uh, Comic Con. That's what they say. Hosting for a little booth or a little uh, a little startup, a little startup called Marvel Studios. That's true. So, uh, how was that like? What was that like for you? Honestly, what was that like? Sorry, you are you? You sound like Jim Glick again. Yeah. So, like Kelly said, I went. I made the trek down to San Diego for what was technically my very first Comic Con, which is crazy because yeah. conventions and that kind of stuff have been a part of my life forever. I do it professionally all the time. And I've done stuff around Comic Con, like after parties and things like that, but never in Comic Con officially. So this year I was down there. I was one of the hosts for now we just called it the Marvel booth. It used to be the Marvel Studios booth, but it's been a combination between the comics and the entertainment side as well as the movies. So it was just Marvel for the first time. And the weekend itself was marvelous. No pun intended. Or actually, probably pun intended. All puns intended. <sighs> Lots of stuff happened. It truly was a blur. Um, and I miss Kelly a lot because she wasn't down there. But I should probably just talk about the actual event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can miss me. I did miss I'm you. We really tried to work it out. We're going to see. I was going to try to take the train down, but I had too many things. Oh, look. I'm wearing my Spider-Punk shirt, too. Yes, yeah, Spider-Punk. Oh, which I wore on one of the days down there. Anyway, it was a great time. Got to uh, meet slash work with my co host for the week, uh, Ray and Angelique, which was very cool. Two lovely ladies that uh, hung out with uh, with them and hosted for the five days down there. We had a ton of fun. Um some of the highlights. It was also the same weekend that Wolverine and Deadpool came out. Oh, still haven't seen it yet. Oh, I know. And I'm trying to avoid spoilers. So far, pretty good. I've heard one little thing, but mm, just a little quote unquote cameo. But I will not spoil it for anyone else. Anyway, but so it was a huge weekend there. They had a, a ton of stuff. They had the costumes from the movie. They had photo ops. They had tons of stuff there for that. Um, at the same time, obviously, it was a big weekend because of... Uh, all the stuff that was announced at Comic Con. If you are a Marvel fan, you probably heard Robert Downey Jr. coming back into the MCU as Doctor Doom. Yes, Kelly's favorite character, Doctor Doom. Doom. She's no. never even heard of Doctor Doom. Mm, I mean, I've heard of him because I know Robert Downey Jr. is playing him. <laughs> I do love Robert Downey Jr. I do love Iron Man. 
I'm not sure that I how I feel yet about the multiverse and other people that we've already seen as superheroes coming back as either villains or superheroes. It's kind of weird. You and the rest of the internet, bro. It is split. It was weird because the announcement happened and we were all kind of like, that's crazy. We didn't know that's what was going to happen. Like they kept it way, way hush hush. And then I got on the internet and I was like, oh, people aren't. Not everybody's stoked about this. But then I still had a whole other day of Comic-Con, and we're like, isn't this the coolest thing ever? Yeah. It's me. It was. I didn't have a problem. Yeah, I, I know we're kind of getting a little sidetracked here. But uh, for- That's all this show is, is um, sidetracks. For those who may or may not be as knowledgeable about comics, because obviously I know, but just for the people, like, do Doctor Doom and uh, Iron Man ever interact with each other? Ever? Like, like, is that like a I bad no guy idea. of Iron Man? Uh, I understand what you're saying. Is that one of Iron Man's villains? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, at some point, maybe. But no, it's t- typically, I believe, a Fantastic Four villain. And Doctor Doom, uh, he wears that mask because he's so yeah. hideous because he was in some tragic accident or blah, blah, blah. And then spoilers. I mean, it's Robert Downey Jr. They did make Ryan Reynolds look crazy, so who knows? But spoilers, if you don't want to know about Doctor Doom's storyline, he ultimately takes off the mask and he has this little teeny scar, but he's just so vain that he thinks like he's disfigured and ugly and oh. terrible. So it'll be interesting, though, because Robert Downey Jr. presumably won't be playing Iron Man as Doctor Doom. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's be Doctor Doom. Right, which I, I don't know. I'm I have nothing but confidence that Marvel will find the best path to it and through it and it's going to be awesome. And it's probably the shot in the arm that they may have needed cuz you know, interest has waned a bit with uh COVID happening and people not going back to movie theaters and then finishing off the first 10 years with Infinity War. Like people were like, I think we did it. And I think this could be the thing that gets those people who are not the dedicated hardcore people, but the ones on on the fringe maybe to come back and check it out. So anyway, yeah, I think that's really probably cool. true. <laughs> uh Favorite moment was also my least favorite moment from the whole convention, truly. I mean, same story, different people. But uh, when you do the things that I do, you interview lots of different types of people. And it can be tricky when you're interviewing people who are high up in studios in the movie business because uh, there's certain things that they can and can't say. Mm-hmm. Like about movies and that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's you never want to step on the landmine of like asking a question and then being like, well, I can't talk about that because then you feel stupid and it puts them in a weird position. Usually those people will, their team will send some questions ahead for an interview. They'll be like, here's the three pre-approved questions, that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit uh, less fluid, a little bit less art in it. And it's a little bit nerve wracking. And honestly, for me, I usually don't get worried, but I was worried about this one. I was... I don't know if I should or shouldn't say the person's name, so I, I won't. Like, are you going to say the person's name? I, I don't know because they were amazing and lovely, but I, I don't know. I don't want to. You don't then. Okay. One of the uh, high ups on that movie. Uh, on Deadpool and Wolverine? Yes. Well, All I right. mean, you can look it up and see what who interviewed this person. Whatever. Executive producer on Deadpool and Wolverine. I get to interview her. <clears throat> pardon me. And I was really anxious about it leading up to it because they sent three approved questions or three questions that they came up with for 30 minutes for 30 minutes. Yeah. And the questions were very quick answers. I was like, I, I, what, how how am I going to do this? And so I ended up doing my research and all that kind of stuff, which I would have done anyway, but it just felt more difficult with this one. And so, uh, you know, she and I chit chat backstage, have a nice little talk. We go out there, we have a great time. Uh, she knocked it out of the park. It was awesome working with her and she did a great job. And then we get backstage and it was kind of like, great, cool. See you later. Bye. Yeah. See ya. And I was like, oh, because like years ago when I've uh, interviewed one of the former higher ups at Marvel, Victoria Alonzo, after I finished my interview with her, she was like, you were the best interview I've ever had. I'm going to ask for you every time. You're amazing. I was like, that's what I thrive on. That's why I got into the business. Tell me I'm pretty. (laughs) And so I didn't get that from this person. And I was like, okay, no big deal. It, 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 It went well. I know it went well. Fast forward that night, uh, Kelly's like, you should you should go to this party. And I'm not a party attender. Yeah, it was a Marvel Studios after party. And yes. I was like, you got to go. Yeah, so it was Marvel Studios put it on for Marvel Studios people. People, yeah. Like Harrison Ford was there because he's the Red Hulk or the president or something in the next Captain America wow. Brave New World. Oh, yeah, he's a b- bad guy. Uh, I don't really know. I don't know if Red Hulk is technically good or bad. Or well, he's in it. That's he's in it. Yeah, 
He's in it. He's in it. Uh, Anthony Mackie was there. Captain America himself. A uh, handful of other people, too. Um, but those are the ones I remember. Kevin Feige, of course, was there, the president of the studio. So it was Louis Disposito. Uh, anyway, I was like, I don't really want to go. Is it, it was like a last minute thing. And I was there by myself. Obviously, I had my co-hosts that were going to go. and But I was like, yeah, I just, I'll probably just stay. And Kelly's like, you should really go. I was like, it's all about the hang, y'all. <sighs> That's true. And I know we've talked about it on the show quite a bit. But it really is true. I just kind of thought I was like, I've hung with these people all week. <laughs> like, it's I've hung. You're totally right. And it was totally different. It was a great time. Got to go there. I walked down there with the girls, uh, which is our affectionate term for the co-hosts. And uh, we had a nice time. We made our way down. We'd see people who we've been working with or haven't seen for a couple of years, like my guy Andy Park and people who work within disney proper and all that so it was fun it was a good time and i was kind of hobnobbing like literally trying to figure out have i stayed long enough that i can leave like i'll just walk back by myself it's no big deal and i'm like eh let me say hi to a few people let me grab like some food go grab a drink and so i walk over to the bar and there's no one there and uh i'm just talking to the bartender because we developed a rapport after all of the drinks and i don't see who's standing next to me or walks up next to me but this person this woman goes sp and i was like oh my gosh it's you and it was the exec that i had uh interviewed earlier and she just goes you were so prepared for that interview like you really did your research you asked such great questions questions that i haven't been getting all the time like on the they just finished a whole press junket for the movie and you know we just kind of go back and forth complimenting each other and you know how long have you been how long have you all that stuff but uh it was exactly what i hoped that i would have gotten needed yeah and had i not gone i would have left that loop wide open and i wouldn't have gotten that partially closure and partial fulfillment and all that kind of stuff and so that was really really cool so that was kind of my highlight as well i think the quick version of what most people's highlight would have been at the booth is that we were doing a a bit and then all of a sudden the stage manager's like oh we have someone here and i'm like what's going on and i open the curtain and president and producer, executive producer of, yeah, Marvel Studios. Why uh, I thought you needed me to remind you of what his name was right then? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was, was desperately like, yeah, trying to get his you. title yeah. right, but you're, it's him. It's him. Yeah. No, he came out. Uh, it was very fun to interact with him again. I haven't seen him since we did the Loki two prem- season two premiere, but he's always so very fun. nice. Yeah, that was a good time too. Anyway, that was a long, long explanation of most of my time at Comic Con. What did you do? And then do? he cried every night in his hotel room because he missed me. I'm just kidding. He didn't at all. <laughs> no, it's because I missed Brooklyn. Hey. I hey. I miss both of you. What did I do, you ask? I so watched much. Uh, in that week. You really well, did do a what lot. What didn't I do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I watched my mom get shots in both of her eyes. Oh, no. Which I won't go into. It's her, her story to tell. She's totally fine. Totally healthy and fine. Way to just tease it. Be like, needles, eyeballs, moving on. She's totally fine. Dad was out of town for a conference. Asked if I'd be willing to take my mom because obviously once you get shots in the eye, you can't really drive. Yeah. You shouldn't at least. You should maybe not even walk. I don't know. <laughs> you were worried too. You were like, I don't know if I can get her where I need her to go if she She blind. kept telling me that she like wouldn't be able to see at all. Now I, now I know that she got last time she did one eye like one eye each time yeah and so they completely covered whatever eye they had like like with an eye patch yeah, like yeah, a yeah. pirate kind of well like yes I'm not very, like an actual eye patch but like a cotton i'm pretty distraught that i haven't seen a photo of that ever like neither have i i don't have a photo of it because they didn't put them on my mom was like why aren't you guys doing that and they're like well can't really put it over both your eyes because then you can't see and i was like that is a good point your mom's like good because i have to drive home no <laughs> i was like i truly she that's what she had told me i was like how am i gonna lead her out of here thank god there's a ramp right here but like i just gotta get her in an elevator and then up an elevator and then in the car i was like it wasn't even as bad dang plane train automobile right but anyways i did that with her I hung out with her for the day I have to snug the cats that I normally can't do because somebody is allergic, SP. That somebody is me. Yeah, so that was fun. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Sorry. Who sings that song? Somebody come get her. Is it Sean Kingston? Maybe. Okay, let's just say it is. It's probably not. Did you hear him and his mom got, like, arrested for, like, an illegal smuggling ring? No. 
Yeah, it's not one of the stories, but it was Somebody bananas. go get him. <laughs> <laughs> He's stealing like a felon. <laughs> That's probably not his song at all. He's somebody called 911. That's why it was That's ironic, it is, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Kingston is smuggling things in. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't see him. Okay. Well, anyway, so, so back to your mom. great story of needles and needles eyeballs. Needles and eyes. Uh, so that was one of the days that you were gone. Another day, I drove all the way out to Montecito to do a walkthrough at a beautiful place, Bella Vista Estates. Not many people have been able to get there. It's gorgeous. It's huge. But I'm You've doing, been there twice now. And I'm doing a wedding there here soon. So I got to do that, which was fun. I can't remember if I did anything else that day, but I did that. I went to CC's, which apparently is an iconic pancake place, just right here. Jump, hop, and a skip away on Ventura Boulevard. <laughs> Isn't well, that how you got your mom out of the hospital that jump day? Jump, hop, and a skip. That's right. And a wheelchair. Just kidding. Wheelchair. No wheelchair. That's how you get to the front of the line. That's right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, did, I went there with my brother, which was fun. And then we went to go surprise my yep. mom at home, yeah. only to find out that she was not there. And so we played she's cribbage out there driving for hours blind. and hours and hours. Yeah, she's out there just driving. No. She's going to give me a real hard time about this. Yeah, later. she is. She's going to be laughing. It's okay. But yeah, that was kind of that week. I can't really remember what else I did. Brooklyn was with her mom and pops. Oh, yeah, but we FaceTimed a lot. Yeah, and I was an just here story. by myself. Yeah. I had a pretty tough time. I have you went really... out with Shim, too. Oh, yeah. If that's what oh, you did after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, How did I forget about that? Oh. Uh, after my. Uh, when the Mendocino, Montecito It wasn't Farms, that day. It was whatever the next it is. day. Look, it's all a Comic-Con blur to me. It doesn't matter. All that there was something else that happened that day. I couldn't tell you because I had to get home for it. But I um. What in the world was it? Well, let's look in the calendar since it's really bugging him. Let's see. It is really bugging me, and I'm sorry because nobody else really cares nobody this cares. much. Nobody cares. It's not even in the calendar anymore. Oh wait, yes it is. Oh, I had Burke Williams. I went to Burkity Williams with my mom. Oh, so bougie. Spa. So bougie. I spa my monthly spa day. Um, but yeah, I have a really hard time when SP's gone. And this was a really difficult time for you to be away. You've been away since this. Don't cry. But this, no, I'm not going to. This was the first time that you have been, well, a couple things. But the first time that you have been away okay. since the flood. In our home. Oh, and Brooklyn in wasn't here this time. Because you, you've been away once before, but B and I were here. It's a little bit right. easier when there's someone else because it's like you're doing things and you're trying to take her to gymnastics or whatever I'm doing. But I was just home basically alone. And every day was like, oh, my God. It's not raining. So there's no way it's going to flood. But, like, what? what's the thing that's going to happen? Were you worried, truly? Um, I wasn't, like, super worried, but I was emotional, which you know because I think I cried on the phone with you every day because I miss him. <laughs> we might be getting too personal. <laughs> that is slightly My therapist knows. It's okay. Yeah, I think I'm she listens really, to the podcast. Listen, I cry at Hallmark commercials. I mean, commercials aren't really a thing anymore. She cries at Hallmark events. Uh, yeah, that's true. I cried at, at TikToks. That's a new thing. That's a new commercial. Really? It's like the 45 second TikToks that you see, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, My but favorite ones too, to cry so. to of those, mm -hmm. of the TikTok persuasion. Is like a dude who comes back to a person living on the street and they're like, hey, I, I thought you'd never come back. So like obviously they've met before and he's like, hey, I've got something for you. And it's like an apartment <laughs> and like a haircut and a beard shave. And he's like, you changed my life. And I'm not trying to make fun of anybody, but it's it. I always try not cry? to cry. I mean, I, I haven't seen one in a while. You're so sweet. Got such a sweet, sweet soul. Yeah. I'd ball at those two. I'd cry. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were being silly at first, though. I'm not no, lie. no. Our daughter is the same way I'm learning. Yeah. There'll be oh. sad commercials on, and she's like, this is so sad. I was like, you're not actually crying, but I understand that the emotion is there. Do you remember? Oh, without spoilers, we finished watching Gravity Falls with Brooklyn this oh, week. Oh, yeah. And that's what she was maybe she's sad about. At. No, there was a commercial that came on in between something we were watching. But that's what's that. We're now off topic. It's besides the point. Busy weeks. There's so no fun. topic. The topic is You asked me how my week up. was. Yeah. That's part of catching up, dog. <laughs> catching up, dog. Catch it up. Um but yeah, I hung out with Shimmy. We went to Din Tai Fung. Did you have Din Tai Fung? We did. You know, Din Tai Fung is a fun experience to go to, and I'm so grateful that my friends 
well, Saman and I, and you and I are so similar in taste buds because we just get the same things. We are taste buds. But um, Oh, man. It's going to be one of those. Yeah, it is. But like spicy noodles, spicy chicken wontons. We have Christina to thank for the spicy noodles. Thanks, Christina. Um, a cucumber salad, which isn't a salad, but it's cucumber stacked on top of each other with spicy chili oil and other stuff. It's so good. It's solid. I was I'm a hater saying. for a minute, but it's pretty great. It was great. Pear, meat, pear lychee martinis. Yum. Anywho, it was a great experience. I had a great week. I, I had great moments in my week and sad moments in my week. Yeah. That was two weeks ago. Yeah. And then this week has not been quite as eventful, except I've been in rehearsals for D23. Wah, 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 wah. That's coming up. In a couple days. Yeah. So if you're going to, this will air before I go out there. So if you're a D23, holla at your boy. <laughs> <laughs> it just came out of my mouth. I don't know. It's pretty solid. <laughs> um, I'm doing all the nights uh, with some of my, my pals over at the Honda Center. So every night thing at the Honda Center, I'll be there on that main stage DJing and and stiff. Your girl will be over at Disneyland That's if you right. want a buddy to hang with. <laughs> <laughs> Go find her in Cars Land. And then I'll be at the pool. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get the pool experience that you didn't get. Yeah, can I talk about this? Yeah, of course. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so SP's be been in rehearsals for D23. We got a buddy, a couple buddies, a couple of really good buddies that work obviously at Marvel cuz he's been there for a long time. And one of them, so sweet, so kind, absolutely adore this person, found out, well, I got invited to the Loki 2 premiere. Oh, so fun. You worked it. I got to attend. It was so fun. I took <laughs> Ashley May. It was a blast. Well, was it Ashley May? Yeah, it was Ashley May. It was Ashley May. It was a blast. We had so much fun. I love Loki, so it was so great. But at that premiere is when our friend found out that I love Loki. And so she told SP the next time that they saw him that they had something for me. And I was like, Oh, well, like that's so sweet. Like, what could it be? I don't even know. Well, lo and behold, SB has rehearsal for D 23 and come home one day and goes, I have a box for you. I was like, what do you mean you have a box for me? He has a box for me because our friend gave him a box of Loki things. And it included a TVA cup. Mug. I, mug. Sorry. Mug that I'm drinking my tea out of right now. I got the, the cutest TVA stapler, which is like so fun. I got it's like a rose gold. It's a rose gold. It looks TVA. like the inside of the TVA. It's yeah, it's beautiful. I got a Miss Minutes mug and then I got, I can't remember what it's called. The Tesseract. The Tesseract. Cube, I was going to say the Tesseract. Post-it notes. Yeah. And post-it notes. Nodes. But it was just like a super sweet, notes. like super, thoughtful super, super thing. sweet and thoughtful yeah. thing. Yeah. So. Oh, did we, did we take sips of a hot tea at the same time? Was it hot? <laughs> it wasn't worth the bit. ASMR. <laughs> good times, good with times. SPNKR. Oh gosh. That's a good title. ASMR with SPNKR. It's not today though, friends. Don't worry. Don't don't do <laughs> Don't. All right. Well, you want to get Anywho. into some stories? I'm like what I got out. I listen. You got more to talk I have about. More to talk. There's been so much that happened. That's what I was saying I know earlier. We have stories, and you're like, but listen, what? I know we have stories, but we're getting personal at this from home day. Listen, this week has been Cocoa Bananas <laughs> for me. Why are you laughing? Because no one's ever said you the phrase. You do. No, I say Cocoa Nuts. Oh, <laughs> Cocoa. Cocoa Bananas. <laughs> Banana Nuts. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Go on. Cocoa Bananas is better. I just need you to know. You guys I let agree. Me know, Cocoa Bananas good. is better. Um, also, these microphones are 100 pounds. They are. We all make choices. I'm okay. But I was a good singer. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Sorry. So tell me what was Cocoa Bananas. Cocoa Bananas. Uh, because work has been insane for me. And I'm starting to experience an anxiety that I haven't experienced before. Listen. I, our house flooded. And I focused on our house for two months straight. That's all that I did. Work, who needs it? He, SP was doing it. It's fine. I, <laughs> I was like, housework, not for no, me. No, no. He was gone on the road, and I was here. Just, I mean, he helped too. I'm not, I'm not t- trying to take that away from you. But like, my main focus was like, get the house back in order, so that we can come home and be here. We had to pick out paint. We had to pick out flooring. We had to install it all. We had to paint the walls, all the things. Yada yada yada. That's what I focused on. I had events sprinkled in that I already planned, but I wasn't getting new business because I wasn't trying. I was like, I'm too overwhelmed. I can't do it now. Fast forward three months. <laughs> Here I am. Okay, don't be laughing at me. Because you were like, fast forward. It looked fast forward. like you were saying what's on the button you press. Fast like, forward. That's right. Fast forward three months. Here I am 
in the fall, which I should know that the fall is busier for us. Still summer. Yes, but technically September is the first month of fall. It is literally August. Yes, but did all I say a- October? August. Earlier? Almost, I don't know. I may have. But I'm just saying, I, all, my events start at the very, very end of this month, which is basically September. Yes. The fall. And like, I get really busy. But I've had some inquiries for some, from, the little. I've had some inquiries from some large companies, and I can tell that it's starting to stress to pick me back out up. a yep. bit. It's stressing you out. Sorry. It's okay. I, I don't know if I can talk you. about it or not. So it's complicated. Sure. I mean, probably don't want to give out the company names that you're not solidified with yet but you can say what you uh, want other no, than but that. i did it's it's so cool we talk about this a lot and i just want to say it because i'm just processing that's what podcasts are for to process information yeah we're switching to a working through it i know we are um i never in a million years thought i'd be where i'm at now in my business two years in and to have been in contact with some of these lo- very large companies that are well known to hire me of all people so it's a very weird place to be and it's so stinking cool to be able to say oh i did an oscar party and i literally saw oscars the little oscar guy (laughs) yeah i have pictures of him like how crazy like how many people get to say that they were there and that they had oscar winners at their oscar party that were in their booth yeah i mean i know i just own a photo booth but just saying pretty cool so it's been insane and uh, which is cool. I mean, work for Disney. I've worked for Paramount Plus. I've worked for Neon. And I just continue to have like large companies reach out, which is pretty cool. But the most recent one is a large airplane company. That's not what you call it. Airline. <laughs> airline. Thank yeah. you. A large airline reached out for to utilize one of my booths for an event that's coming up here in L.A. And um, it's a dream. And I'm excited about it, but I'm also terrified. No one tells you when you start your own business or you do something that the worst part, like it's, it is like whiplash. You get an email and you're like, oh my goodness, this person wants to work with me. That's amazing and incredible. They just, what a great day. All they want is a quote. And so you send an email back and you're on this really big high. And then the moment you press send on the email to be like, oh, let me hear more about it. Or this is my quote. You're like, oh my God, what if they hate me? Yeah. And you just sit in that. <laughs> For however long it takes for them to respond back to you, which luckily most people do tend to respond back to me. Not everyone does. Yeah. Most people do. Although I did get a good email today from one of the studios where they, the event that they were going to hire me for got canceled, which it happens. Yeah. Okay. But it's always nice when you get an email and someone's like, I just found out that the event got canceled, but all caps, I promise we're going to find a place for you because I want I love your booth. I'm like, you know. That's cool. It's not all about getting booked. Sometimes it's about making connections. Well, it's all about making connections. Yeah. It's all about the hang. But the amount of anxiety and stress I've had today, through the roof. Astronomical. Today in particular? Uh, just because I had so many outgoing things that I was doing. Think about my day. Let's just talk about it for a second. Let's do it. Let's just do it. We're on a podcast. You got time. It's yeah, fine. Uh, nothing but time. Uh, email from a really big airline right. that came through. I had to go get my nails done. So I'm not responding I mean, to emails. That's a big deal. Listen, they look gorgeous, but not responding to any emails during that whole time. So I'm just, every time my phone goes off, I'm like, is it them responding back to me? Is it them responding back to me? I don't know. Get home, have an email from the other event we're doing in Minnesota this month asking for something. Okay, send that off. That's cool. Got to get COIs to people for things that we're doing as well. Great. Get an email back that the event got canceled, but you're amazing and awesome. Cool. Haven't heard back from the original airline company that um, I worked with. So I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting. Get a phone call that a friend of mine tore their Achilles heel. So now I'm going to go stage manage for something when I wasn't planning on doing that. Super excited about it, but totally got it. Got to send a new invoice for that. I know it doesn't sound like overwhelming, but it is. Get an email back finally from the airline company that says, sorry, uh, lost track of time today. Can you meet tomorrow? Of course I can meet tomorrow. Of course I can jump on a phone call with you tomorrow. That's totally fine. (laughs) But the next day, not so much. We'll be at Disneyland. But all that to say, no one a day tells you. in the life of a business owner. Mind you, most of the time I watch Castle and colored <laughs> in my coloring book. That's what I was going to say. No one tells you when you start your own business that you can just go to Disneyland on a Wednesday. Right, but you can. But it doesn't mean that there... I also got to figure out a custom backdrop that I said we were going to do. I know. That I got to figure out how I'm going to hang it and then how I'm going to like travel with it to Minnesota. How do you do that? I don't know, but I'm going to figure it out. Just kidding. I know how. I just <laughs> It's just one of those things where you're kind of sitting and waiting like, are they going to approve it and be <sighs> yeah. like, Yes. So you just sit and sit and sit and wait. A day in the life. Anyone Anyone want to come work for me? No? Okay. Cool. <laughs> it's 
Seth, and I got a show. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't don't forget. Back line. <laughs> just kidding. Um, anywho, that was a lot to say. I just have been a little bit stressed out. And I'm probably going to talk to my therapist about it when I meet with her in a couple of weeks. Yeah. You should get those on the calendar and earlier. Let's not, let's not get this confused. I know I'm talking a lot. It's cool. Home show, baby. I love what I do. I feel very grateful that I get to spend so much time with you, so much time with Brooklyn, that I get to travel on the road with you. It's like so cool that I can go take my mom to the hospital on a random Thursday morning because I don't have to be anywhere. I don't have to request time off. I just, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to respond to emails till later or I'm going to wake up earlier and do that. So how great. But also it's just mixed with the anxiety of like, will people like me? Am I pretty enough? Which you struggle with. Yeah, I hope people know when I say that too. I don't literally mean tell me I'm pretty. I just mean like tell me I'm good enough. Yeah. That's my yeah. phrase for that. Uh, well, and then you mix in just so you know, like the TikTok stuff. And every time we post a video and I go, am I good enough? Yeah. Who's going to comment and say that I look fat today? Like right. that one guy that was like, <laughs> he looks better than she does. I was like, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing. We didn't talk. We talked about it briefly at the beginning, but like some of these videos, we posted a video every single day starting on July 1st. July 1st. At least one a day. Yeah, maybe two um, sometimes. Yeah, some th at the beginning at least. And we've already had a couple, uh, like 8.6 million views, yeah. 3.5 million, half a million. Like we've definitely have a lot there and there's like thousands and thousands of people like giving their two cents on stuff. Which is great, but also not always mm -hmm. nice. It's not always nice. Yeah. And honestly, stuff is time consuming mm -hmm. to shoot, to edit, even the yeah. podcast, which I love doing. Yeah. And it's kind of what kicked off all this stuff. Yep. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of work. But that's why this is our last episode. No, but we made $40. Is it worth it? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> we woke up today and we're like, oh. We actually got paid for these views. Wow. We're like real podcasters Real now. influencers. To be fair, we did make some money the day before. 40 cents. It was a big Big one. That's like 40 my- 40 cents, baby. 40 cents is very reminiscent for me of my- um, sag after My SAG-AFTRA residuals that I get in the mail where yeah. I'm like, oh, I made eight cents today. Because How Kelly was on 90210. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> got to record in Capitol Records. It was a dream. It was good times. It was a dream. It was good times. A different, well, a different lifetime is what it feels like. It really is. Yeah, we've we've lived a lot of life. Yeah, and I'm grateful, but also I could use a little less of it at times. <laughs> okay. Too many life in my too much life in my years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you've been feeling stressed and anxious this week. It's okay. I hope uh, you got to just unscrew the top of that two liter soda a little bit and just let a little of that pressure out yeah you know i think it's good to talk about it and i think it's good i hope it's good for people to hear that like it doesn't matter what you do it's always going to be stressful whether you're a stay-at-home mom and you like watch kids and you have to make the lunches and do the laundry and all of that stuff or you're a ceo at some top firm Golf. like whatever it is or you're a business owner like it doesn't matter it's like all stressful yeah I th I'm sure I've probably said it on the show, and I think it was Jerry Seinfeld who said it, maybe. Also could have been Bob Saget, but he was like, he was getting interviewed, and he was like, you just, every career has its insanity. Yeah. You just have yep. to find the one that you can handle. Like, yeah. you can handle that type of insanity. Yeah. I couldn't handle the insanity of a desk job and asking permission to have a day off. Like, no. I know that's like yeah. super normal, fortunate. <laughs> It's privileged of me to say, but I couldn't do that. I can most of the times handle my kind of crazy, but mm -hmm. sometimes it is overwhelming. And honestly, that's why we're doing a home show today, too. Like, we didn't have enough opportunity and time to make it to the studio. And that's okay. Yeah. So now it's a late night show because, why like, while you, while you make your own hours, sometimes those hours are at midnight. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah, it's good. It's the midnight show. It's not. <laughs> I'm a liar. Do you want to uh, jump into any of the show proper, or you just want to keep yeah, talking about? I got how... you. Ooh, oh, I got you. Alrighty. I have two things, so we'll see how much time we have. But because I feel like we need to get out of a little bit of our our funk, our funk. Listen, I know what you're gonna say. I know what you're gonna say. Okay. I know uh, what you're gonna say. You're... I I could have stalled for you this I whole know. time. <laughs> You're going to say yes. that this is too similar to Unpapa Pins, but I promise it's not. Oh, I so I don't know what this is. No, 
I mean, okay. maybe it is. But this is the deal. I just want you to give your quick, quick. Word association? Hot take. Hot takes with your hot takes. Oh, oh, okay. I love a good name for a game. I don't know if that works. Hot but takes for your hot cakes. With your hot cakes? With my buns. Well, yeah. All right. Hit me but with. But hot takes. So that's all I'm doing. Giving you. It's. It, we're not going to talk about it. Nope. You're just going to tell me yes or no. Oh, jeez. Or like you agree or disagree. Boy, this could this be taken one. out of context later. I already know what okay. you're going to say. Hit me. Skinny jeans are still stylish. Yes, they are. Pineapple is not good on pizza. False. It is actually great on pizza. Instagram is better than Snapchat. Uh, yeah, of course it is. Who's on Snapchat? Guacamole is actually salsa. Mm, yeah, it is. Uh-huh. 100%. A hot dog is a sandwich. I was just thinking about this the other day. I don't think so because I think a sandwich has to have two perpendicular pieces of bread that are like one is flat on the surface, and not we're two sticking up. On. Uh, <laughs> the Bachelor is the best reality TV show. No. The circle. Breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. It's not, but it's the best. Shaking hands is actually unsanitary. Yeah, duh. That's why people be fist bumping. Nicolas Cage is a great actor. I think he is underappreciated in his time. I think we'll look back at him as a genius. Cooking for one is harder than cooking for four. True. Paper straws are worse than plastic ones. (laughs) Yeah, 100%. Especially for milkshakes. Be careful with this next answer. Not everyone needs to go to college. That is true. I think most people shouldn't go to college. I wish I didn't go to college. That's right. I, that's why I didn't. Not everyone need. Oh, no, I just read you that. Uh, uh, <laughs> cake <laughs> frosting is often too sweet. Um, No. Just eat less of it. Staying up late is better than waking up early. Is better. Um, No, I'd go the opposite. I have three more. Maybe four more. Brunch is just an overpriced breakfast for late risers. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> Video games are better at storytelling than most movies. Yes. I agree with that, too. I agree with that. Running is a hobby and not a personality trait. I think it's neither. It shouldn't even be a hobby. As- astrology is just made up fun, not science. Um, I have no idea about that, except if the moon can literally push and pull the large body of water we call an ocean to think that the universe and the solar system doesn't have any effect on us seems a little outrageous and last but not least you don't need a smartwatch if you have a smartphone uh i agree with that actually (laughs) as kelly looks at her watch (laughs) i we already know this about me i don't like notifications it pings my anxietings as it literally pings yes Really and truly. So, no, I am not. Um, I lost the question because I just started thinking about my notifications. Smartwatches. Oh, yeah. I don't need another thing to notify me. Yeah. I want to be less notifiable. I need it. so I can't handle it. But I use it for gigs and stuff. That's really what it is, is when I'm working, I have it on my, my watch, which is not connected to my phone right now. And so I need to figure it out because we got new <laughs> so phones. It help. We got new phones. And so it hasn't quite figured it out yet but i will three phone family now anyways that was hot takes with your hot cakes (laughs) (laughs) i'm kelly your hot cakes (laughs) i'm kr and you've been hot cakes for the evening (laughs) thank you and good night you just got hot (laughs) cakes now we're like a morning radio show yeah it's sp and hot cakes hot cakes cakes! that's right brew Uh, on the radio we're coming for you you don't even know who that is. No. I do. Who is it? <laughs> He's just Brew. Is it Moses? On the radio. His name is Brew. <laughs> what station? You don't even know that? <laughs> You're like, I hope he doesn't quiz me. But. Yeah. He did do stuff for the Olympics this year. It's pretty cool. Brew did? Yeah, he's pretty big on TikTok. He is dating one of my favorite TikTokers, Anna Sitar. You sure know a lot about a man you know nothing about, seemingly. They've been dating for three years. Okay, this has been a lot. He too has been at some of the premieres that you've been at as well. Well. But interviewing people on the side. What are you saying? He's better than me? No. You've been on the inside. He's been on the outskirts. Sucker.
This Just kidding. Is, it's getting weird. Anywho, I'm ready for your stories. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. Happy Olympics, by the way. <gasps> we have Olympics. Said it. Congratulations to the U.S. Uh, gymnastics team, Simone Biles, yeah. especially you, all around gold medalist, friend of the show. We just want to give her a little shout out so she She's knows so what great. thinking of her. She's so strong. <laughs> you didn't see uh, the most recent one, but the most recent Olympics. No, the most recent gymnastics uh, competition, okay. but they had three black women on the podium afterward. I love it. Because there were the winners? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah just making sure. Yeah. But I was like, how great. That's great. And it was two U.S. and one Brazil. And the two U.S. like. Oh, I know who the Brazilian lady was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember her. Andrade. It's okay. her last name. I don't remember that part, but I believe you. Yeah, but she got first place. Did she really? Yeah. Good for her. She cool. did? Mm-hmm. Not an all around. I think it it was in a, a floor routine. I think. Yeah. Or bar. A lot of people fell off the bar. Anyways, we're getting lost in gymnastics, which I absolutely love and have been enjoying. So sorry. Kelly has been setting her alarm for like six a.m. to snooze and sleep through the gymnastics, but sh- she has been setting the alarm. So that's been two forty five a.m. seemed a little much. A like little, a little much. much. You know what else seems like a little too much? Hmm this thing that's about to change your ever loving life because you are a boneless wings girl i am a boneless wings girl and i am not a boneless wings girl no i'm a bone-in kind of gal (laughs) ohio supreme court says boneless chicken wings can have bones wait i'm sorry why i know doesn't that go against the entirety of the name? I know. So this went the to the Supreme Court, 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 Court had to make this? The Supreme Court of Ohio. But still. All right, Ohioans, whatever you guys call yourself. Uh, Ohioans. No. Duh. I'm pretty sure. Okay. O-H. Ohio. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this went up to like the highest court in the state. I, yeah, I understand. The Supreme Court is the highest court. <laughs> Just making sure Supreme you Supreme know. Court it's of so- Ohio. <laughs> you ever watch the Drew Carey show? No. Oh, that's how they end the theme song, the intro song. Cleveland rocks. And it sounded like you were doing that. Ohio! Nor. Oh, man. I'm just that much older than you. <laughs> this wasn't much of a story. Like, they don't tell you who took it to court and all that kind of stuff. But do they tell you why? Yeah, because they say, like, it's understood that this is made from an animal and animals have bones. Sure. And so it's not unreasonable to expect that there might be a little bit of a bone piece over here, a little some something over there. These aren't vegan wings, people. These are real ch- yeah, but grade A chickens. You, vegan doesn't mean there's no bones. <laughs> vegan means there's no animal product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that would include bone. Got it. The Supreme Court is dumb. <laughs> if there's not a good enough process to be able to take... Happy Olympics, everybody. Yeah. Let's but go, America. Listen, it's, <laughs> if people... The Supreme Court's not smart enough to be like, yeah, it's boneless. It's in the name, boneless wings. Listen... You, if you don't have a process good enough to take the bone <laughs> out of the chicken, I think they do. Then you can't, but you can't say that it's boneless if you aren't trying hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> what are they gonna like sift through the meat? I've seen. Haven't you had like a little piece of bone in something? Yeah, in rotisserie chicken, that ha- literally you pull it off the bone. Maybe I'm thinking like if you bite down sometimes like in a McDonald's burger and you're like, I think I got a hoof, a little piece a of hoof, hoof, a little piece of hoof. A little piece of fat. Is you know what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking about. I don't get that very often. Um, but you eat a lot more cheeseburgers than I do. Uh, I rude. <laughs> rude. Saying, chicken nuggy type of person. Um, I lost my whole point. <laughs> my whole uh, thread is your, gone. Your whole point was if it's boneless wings, there shouldn't be any Oh, bones. I was going to say, I we watched seasons and seasons of Unwrapped and how it's made. That's so true. I, if, I'm like, if they can sift through sugar to refine it to be so perfect you can't sift a chicken nugget but the meat you can you dummy no you can't it's never going to be as fine as granulated sugar listen i know but i'm just saying if there's a process for that 
and there has to be a process. Can we also talk about the fact that since Wait, we've watched and is that saying that anything that we buy at the grocery market, if it says boneless chicken <laughs> the wings, grocery market, grocery store, <laughs> shut up at the superstore. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, but when we go to the food marketplace, go on. Yeah, listening. when we go to the food marketplace, superstore, grocery. Walmart. That's right. I haven't stepped foot in a Walmart. In a long time. Since the last time I needed Hornet spray. Yep. Windshield wipers was what I remember the last Did time I Did you in. know Walmart, like one of the biggest employers in the entire country? Yes. Go ahead. That's all. Makes sense. They're huge. They're like a Costco, but without the membership. How do we get there, though? Unwrapped if you chicken nuggets, yeah, can sell boneless things in the grocery market superstores place, <laughs> uh-huh. heard of it, then like you, what are, is the Supreme Court of Ohio <laughs> going to say? Well, there could be bone in the boneless meat, even though we're saying it's boneless. I, theoretically, yeah. It's just dumb. Yeah. Like how dumb? Don't call it boneless. Call it almost boneless. Well, to be fair, when I order like a beef taco. Close enough. That's what we're going to call it. Close enough nuggets. <laughs> Mostly boneless. Yeah, sorry, when you order a taco. <laughs> Hybrid wings. If I order a taco at Taco Bell and it's beef taco. Yes. Look, that's kind of false advertising too, isn't it? It is beef. It's not really beef. What, what is it? I heard it comes to ship to the store it? like um, dehydrated in little pellets. Which could still be beef. It could be freezer dry. Rehydrated beef pellets is what I'm eating. Yeah. I really am just a cattle aren't i yeah can you refer to one cow as cattle as a cattle i don't know i'm not a farmer <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what you expect me to know <sighs> i everything yeah i know all of it yet i'm the one with the internet on my lap what right do now. cows drink depends on the age of the cow no yes. <laughs> <laughs> i believe that baby cows drink milk oh why else would they be there i didn't say baby cow i said what do you cows said drink? cow what do cows drink water mm-hmm good answer tonight in kombucha oh my gosh kombucha no, just kidding. kombucha the booch what kombucha kombucha all right it is one of those times i love it next up you ready this mm-hmm. is not a follow-up to a story but a follow-up on a theme new jersey man attempts to decapitate seagull after attempting to take fries from daughter i'm sorry <laughs> Why is everybody attacking these animals? I get it. You're trying to protect right? your like human kid. They're an animal. This and dude, just shoot birds, away. Bird's gonna bird. Yeah, bird's gonna. You, the only reason why they're taking your daughter's French fries because other dumb humans before you. Yeah. Fed it to them, and they're like, "Oh, this is how I get my food down." <laughs> this story is short, but it's worth reading a few of the things. Uh, of course, it happened in Jersey. <laughs> Walk in here. That's New York. I get it, but yeah, close enough. Uh, Jersey man is facing charges after authorities say he decapitated a seagull. He really did it? I thought he said he attempted to. You know, there's varying facts here. Got it. Let's hear it. Uh, I didn't want to watch the video because gross. Franklin Ziegler, 29, of Cape May. Is he related to Rachel Ziegler? uh, Only if it's spelled the same and they have shared family. Got it. That's how it would work. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. He admitted to killing the seagull after it attempted to take French fries from his daughter. He then reportedly asked Piers staff, he's on the pier, for a trash bag while holding the head of the seagull. It says that he became irate and uncooperative with officers on un- on an unrelated investigation. About what? Who knows? So it wasn't even so the seagull. So it decapitated the seagull and maybe this human? It's something. But, uh... <laughs> Do you have a trash hey, bag? Yeah. Unless you have a shirt on, you can't order food here. That's right. That's probably what started it. How old was it. his daughter? Uh, it says 35. No. no. I don't know. It doesn't say the age of the daughter, just him, who was 29. So I'm assuming probably, you know. Nine. Elementary. Ten. Yeah. That kind of age. Anyway, uh, he's charged with third degree animal cruelty. Yeah. And uh, yeah, everybody was like, this dude did it. He's a crazy person. Crazy. But isn't that nuts? Like That's every insane. week there's another story about people going crazy. It's always like an irate dad. I know. Killing an animal. It's going around. And that's what they <laughs> think it's contagious. I don't know. I've uh, seen we, truth or dare. The we movie. are going to the dog park tomorrow, so. Are we? No, but that oh. would be a terrible place for that me. That would be. Bring be Scooter. Look at that puppy. No. You know? No. Oh, oh no. Shim sent me this one. Thanks, this next Shim. One. It is an uh, article by the BBC, the British Broadcasting my girl. Company. It's my girl. 
She's not British. I, She's South African. I understand, but that's my girl, BBC. Oh, BBC's your girl. No, but like she's my girl for sending something BBC related. That's my girl. All right. You won me over. Doctor Who. Come on. We'll see if we keep your attention here. Shocks off Brazil's coast test positive for cocaine. Shops? <laughs> or shocks? Did I say shops? You said shocks? Yeah. I was thinking like shock well, we wave. Were, like a earthquake. minute ago, we were in Jersey. Like earthquake. I sharks. Was, sharks. Shocks. <laughs> They don't make that noise. They don't we, make any noise, um, I don't think. You shared this story. Did I talk about it on the podcast? Yeah. Because I don't think I did. Last week. I don't think so because I remember reading this. Yeah, they have they have cocaine. I've been found, you said that, that, the sharks. Is that true? Yeah, with the cocaine. And I think I asked you how. This Let's part reenact I don't the whole episode. It is marvelous just how... We lose track of what we've said on the show. That's true. But you know who's going to tell us? Simon. It's true. And probably Danielle. Well, let's remind me. Probably the whole internet. Yep. No. That's all you get then. That's all. It's, if how someone missed we, last week's episode, how, guess what? You don't get to know why remember. all these sharks are high and swimming in the ocean. Listen, I don't remember how because this week has been just so long. It has. But how do they ingest cocaine? Great question. Moving on. You can't trick me. I can't trick you. It was actually because I thought they were like, I, see, I think this is a different story. They were like strapping cocaine to dolphins or something or pigeons or something. And Sharks. No, I there said, was like a chemical runoff in another country. For sure. But this that was. That the fish were taking antidepressants. Yeah, yeah. But this isn't it. Because I, I think we very specifically said like hmm. sharks are already bad and then we're going to put them on cocaine. Like never swim in the water. You know, you're winning me over, Cal. <laughs> it, uh, you, you make some good points. But how did they, uh, just, just for people that maybe weren't listening last week? There's just a, a big like chemical runoff from the warehouse factories that oh, are making so this. Like, just this going so, into the water, water supply. So yeah. No one else come over here. It's our um, water. We're the sharks. There was one funny thing in this BBC article. <laughs> they were like, all the female sharks that we tested, which were all pregnant, by the way. Makes sense. Tested positive for cocaine, but I was like, they were all pregnant too. Yeah, because that's is what there cocaine, a correlation? What cocaine makes you do. I have no idea. <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> you tell me. Is that what cocaine makes you do? I have no idea. I have no idea. What sharks do? So I what thought that was pretty funny. Do. Well, good news for you. We're about to crack the code. We've been chatting for almost an hour now, Ooh. which is shocking because all we do is we're talk. talkers. We're just talkers. We just talk. But we're about to crack the code here. We're about to inform some people. Got it. Because there's a generation and our daughter's in it. They use these words Gen that alpha. make no sense at all. Yeah. Gen alpha. Gen A, if you will. Gen A, you make no sense. And you so make fun of me too much. There I'm <laughs> just doing the best I can. I lived I through. Leave us alone. 9-11. The 94 earthquake. Technology. Rush. I'm just trying to keep up. Okay? Be nicer to me. Be nicer. I get it. Skinny jeans aren't in regardless of what my husband says. I'm on the train. <laughs> I see it. I, just I have my like cargo pants. Jeans. I have my flared pants that oh I used to wear in the 90s. Stop making fun of me. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I know some of these things have been making fun of us. I just know it. I know. I tried wearing the high socks. I have them. I still wear them. It's horrible. To Disneyland I hated this week. it. I hated it. All right. I let my ankles breathe. Skibbity toilets. Skibbity, skibbity. Exploring the dystopian Gen Alpha trend from brain rot to Michael Bay movies. I'm not going to get any of these right. I love that you know that this is already going to be a game. Yeah, I do. I'm not going to get any of them right, but I'm going to try. Because I, I read the article and uh, it was a lot. But I bet you you can pick out this song. We'll just give it a little listen here. Because my daughter plays it on her thing. And our daughter happens to be Gen Alpha. Yeah. If you were just accosted by that terrible sorry. music, I'm so sorry, but I have a duty, a responsibility to report the news. That is just one example. Skibbity Toilet. Of Gen Alpha slang that makes little to no sense. I have no idea what that means. Is it describing a person? Well, what I did was I have not looked at the answers to these, so I'm here with you. But I had ChatGPT give me a list of 10 Gen Alpha 
sayings or phrases. How do you know if it's right? Uh, I don't know. Gen Alpha will tell us. I have no idea. Uh, but I also think there's some Gen Z in there, so we're going to figure it out together, okay? Okay. First one, Riz. Oh, charisma. Yeah. Short for charisma, used to describe someone who has charm or the ability to attract others. Tom Holland made that big. He's got major he's Riz. He's got all the Riz. All right. Well, would you call him number two? The Rizzler? No, that's different, though. Is it? Yeah, we've talked about this. I thought the Rizzler is the one who has the most Riz. No, the Rizzler is a person. Look, if you're listening to this and you're like, what are they saying? Just know that you're in a safe place and we don't know either. The We're Rizzler's just trying to survive in this a world. Person, though. The Rizzler, a playful term derived from Riz, often uses, <laughs> this is like the lamest way to understand slang. It's how we do it. It's often used to describe someone who is exceptionally charming or good at flirting. But there is somebody named the Rizzler. Example, he's known as the Rizzler at school. No. <laughs> That's the example they gave oh us. Oh my gosh. All right, well, I think I got that right. Three, skibbity toilet. I truly don't know what that means. I do not know. It says a term originating from a meme or viral video, like the one we just played the audio for, often used humorously or to reference something absurd. Skibbity toilet. That video is as funny as a skibbity toilet. Guys, it's so much easier to say that sh- that video is so funny. It's so weird. It's, it's so, so weird. weird. It's crazy. <laughs> Boo. Next, NPC. Non-playable character. That is the literal video game definition, yes. Does it mean something different now? It says, non-playable character used to describe someone who seems to lack independent thought or behaves in predictable manners. Yeah. They basic. Yeah, but we talk about that too. We go, that that's a... We do. Sometimes we see people and we're like, yeah. they're not real. I don't think Gen Alpha had that. I think that they just stole it from us. They don't know what an NBC is. They stole that NBC. from you. They stole your low-rise jeans. They're stealing everything from you, millennial girls. Oh, how about Giga Chad? Oh, the Giga Chad. Oh, yeah. Hit me on the Giga Chad. No, you don't hit somebody on the Giga Chad. No, like, you know, like text me. Hit me Is on the Is that what that phone. means? No, I don't know. No, I think it's describing a person. That's a Giga Chad. It's, it's a an Giga Chad. Exaggerated term for someone who is extremely confident or physically impressive, often used humorously. He's like a Giga Chad with those muscles. Yeah, and that's what I, my brain said. <laughs> I said he's a Giga Chad. Like I don't know. I just couldn't put it into words. But Chad but yeah. was like a derogatory name for a while. No, Chad Michael Murray was not a derogatory. Oh my name. god, one good Chad. Hanging Chads. Chad. Remember those in the election? Chad Wick Bozeman. Fair enough. I'll give it to you. Thank yep. you. Yep. Six. You know this one. Chuggy. Oh, you're so chuggy sometimes. What does it mean? It means like gross or like the ick. You give the ick. Yeah, it says something that is out of date or trying too hard. Often used to describe trends that have gone out of style. Yeah. Much chewy. like the word chooky itself. I know it's not. People don't use it anymore, huh? Guess not. Ratio is number seven. Well, I know what that actually means. Used on social media to indicate that a reply has received more likes than the original post. Implying that oh. the original poster was owned or proven wrong. So well, dumb. I've been freaking ratioed on the internet. Yeah. That's for sure. I don't care. So many times. He got ratioed hard in the comments is what the sentence was. Dang. Sick burn, dog. Three more. Let's see if our millennial brains can guess any of them. I guess it's based. B-A-S-E-D. Oh, you so based, girl. You want to hear the, the sentence first? Yeah. That opinion is so based. Yeah. It's like it's like basic or so boring yeah, or so like dumb. Obvious, yeah. Obvious probably, yeah, right? Yeah. Originally from internet slang, used to describe someone who is unapologetically themselves or makes a statement that others might not agree with but stands by it. So we're oh, totally wrong. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. So that sentence is more like, that opinion is so based. That's so dumb. <laughs> God. Like, I'm like super hopeful for our fe- the future of our Me country. Too. And then when I hear stuff like this, I'm like, mm, I don't know. Y'all are chuggy. <laughs> well but i go like why are we making up words that true truly it's just not a word yeah. and i get that no word is a word until it's a word yes that is truth but like you make up so many words that are also but fake every gener every older generation has felt like this tell me what our our words were that we made up why do they keep saying things are bad when they mean it's good but that's still a real word that's true like i didn't make up a word to describe bad mm. Or cool, 
You're making some good points tonight, Miguel. That, that's all I mean. Like you, they're t- still real words. T- yeah, you're like literally making up words so that people, at least with ours, people could try to grab context clues. Right. It only took them one time to heard that for someone to hear that. Oh, that's bad, and know that it was good. Mm-hmm. Be able to like be like, okay, it can be either or. You hear something like based, you're like. I don't even know. Like, how do you say that word? What is that word like? Like, even with context clues, I'm still out. If you saw the word chuggy spelled out, you'd be like, "Mm, Mm. how do I say that? Is that some sort of nougat? What is that? Yeah, like, what is it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Much like this next next one Sussy Baka. Oh, you a Sussy (laughs) Baka. Whoa, that feels like hate speech. No, give me the sentence. The sentence is. Stop acting like a sussy baka. Yeah. It's such an unhelpful example. Yeah. I think it's like a sussy baka. I think like, ooh, stop acting like a basic bee. Mm-mm. It's more like. A suspicious uh, like you're person. A, you're a sussy baka. Could be baka. I don't know. B-A-K-K-A. So sus. No, B-A-K-A. So sus. A playful combination of sus, per and suspicious. Thanks. I'm old. Thank you. And baka, fool in Japanese, often used in gaming contexts. Stop acting like a sussy baka. I'm going to say that to Randy next time. Yeah. Stop acting like a sussy baka. Danielle, do not tell him what it means. Let's just go with it, okay? Yeah. We'll just make fun of him the whole night. He's just such a sussy baka. (laughs) Last one. Goated. Well, being the goat means the greatest of all time. Sure. But why do I think that that is nothing to do with goated? No, it's basically just that. Oh, really? Yeah. Derived from goat, greatest of all time, used to describe someone or something that is exceptionally good. That game is goaded. Like, it's freaking great. Why not just say that game is the goat? Why because do we have to add Because Kobe's the goat. May he rest in peace. Moment of silence. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> but... Uh, I broke first. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. But why not just say that game, that game's the goat. Oh, well, everyone would know what that means. Except for our parents who'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's the point is every generation comes up with their new way of saying things. So for sure. The next generation. I'm just like saying, saying that your what? generation sounds stupid. Mine? No. This is my, our daughters. You sound stupid, y'all. I know. I accept you. Unlike you, you don't accept us, but I accept you. I'm just saying, some of your words are chuggy. They give me the ick. Oh my gosh. Well, Sus baka. No. Is that right? You? Is it raka or baka? Baka. B a k a. Doesn't matter. We'll never say it again. I'm gonna say it. Uh, for a couple minutes, just a minute or two. Unpopular opinions. Got it. Let's go. Let's do this thing. Different from hot takes. Just want everyone to be clear. <laughs> uh with hotcakes um first of all <laughs> and papa pins babe the olympics need some flair baby we got to get some wwe intros in there we need some rivalries i need to see some of these people on the, the mic of all time simone Biles. Biles. representing the, the united, united states, states of america, america. eight time yeah 11 that's what time I want. olympic gold or olympic medalist when I was doing the bit in my head, she still only had eight. Got it, got it. Yeah. Got it. And she's I was 11 just now. guessing. Most decorated Olympian of all time. I'm, I heard you say that. Pretty sure and Michael Phelps has like 38 medals. No, no, no. I'm, t- I'm truly telling you, she's the most decorated Olympian of all time. I don't think so. Doesn't matter. Don't even worry about it. Anyway, um, Suspaka. Anyway, I'm just saying the Olympics needs more flair. But speaking of the Olympics, I didn't know this. Olympic rule, only two per country limit, destroys the whole purpose of the Olympics. Apparently, you can only get two people per country per event. Did you hear about this? Yeah. So it's not exactly that. But okay. Yeah. Look, you tell me. Drop knowledge. So they have like, um, like so they have the team events that you, you can do. And then they have the individual events. And in the individual events, I believe it's it's only the top two. So, like, for instance, they did women's – I'm going to talk about gymnastics because I've been watching gymnastics. Great. But they did women's all-around gymnastics. So it means you do the vault, you do the bar, you do the uh, parallel bars, the or the uneven bars, rather, and then you do your floor routine, right? So you, oh, do, you do it as a team, but then you do it individually, but only the top two from your country are. So, for instance, this year, the United States of America has very, very, very good female gymna- gymnastics or gymnasts. Yes. So Simone Biles was number one. 
Sunni Lee was number two. Oh my goodness. Childs. And the rest. What's her name? Her name Julia. Is, no, it's not Julia Childs. I knew you were going to say Julia Childs. Wink. Um, I'm going to find her name. But she was number three. Jordan Childs was number three. Jordan Childs, even though she was the third, third ranked, but she was third. She was the top. She was third ranked, was not allowed um, to like compete for the all around women gymnastics because only two people from the country can go in. So even though Got she it, was because there's three, only a certain amount of people that can qualify. You can only have two people from your country qualify. So it didn't matter that she was number three. That sucks. She still didn't get to go. And people are saying, I, I, you're, I guess you're asking my unpopular opinion. I think that if you're the best of the best, you should go. It doesn't matter. If there are three people from the United States or from Brazil or from the Netherlands, whoever, that are that good that they ranked first, second, and third place, they should go. Because it's not about the best and you only get two from your country. It's the best in the world. <laughs> that face. I'm just saying. But you know what I mean? I do. But I also understand why they'd want other countries to be represented because if we had like all eight spots or whatever in gymnastics you're not going to but you i could theoretically well, that's there's the not only eight, thing you train there's for. not eight people yeah you're right but i look at it and go oh well like whoever made it in so let's say there's eight spots number eight you got the participation award of getting into this because you really didn't make top eight you were top nine mm. but because they they wouldn't let someone in because there was already two from that country so do you think it's you're about an olympian being the, if you like you could have qualified but didn't because someone else got no, your spot. But but you don't think that person's an Olympian? No, because they didn't go to the Olympics. But Jordan Childs did go to the Olympics. She was on the Olympic female team for baking. Yep. No, she was on the Olympic Isn't female. That who Julia Childs. Is? Jordan Childs. I don't know who that is. She's an Olympian. Mm. She's won gold and bronze. She's mm. great. Doesn't sound right. But listen, she she was on the Olympic team, but she just didn't get to compete in the women's all around. Because she was number three. So uh, my stance is what I've already said. Is that if you, whoever ranks the highest should go. I agree. I get having a limited amount on the teams. I think that's totally fair. But if you've ranked the highest, you should be able to go. Because it's dumb. Think of, think about how you'd feel. You ranked number three in your country, but, num yeah. or, but number three in the world. But they're like, sorry, you don't get to go. You, we know that you beat out these other countries. You worked your tail off and you like worked really hard to do that. But you don't get to do it. Should have been number two in your country. That's yeah, I mean, Suni Lee beat her out, and Suni Lee's <laughs> great. It's her last year. She you has might... an incurable kidney disease. Jeez. What a downer. It's like you're speaking Gen Alpha to me. I don't know who these people <laughs> are. <laughs> Who's Suni Lee? What's wrong with your kidneys? I don't know. But what I do know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you ready to wrap it up? The wrong question, the wrong unpop opinion for me. Is there another fun unpop opinion you can ask? Sure. Yeah. Goodness. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, let me just look through my giant list of things. You haven't picked up on it. SP has not really been watching the Olympics. No, not so much. And that's okay. Not so much. But your girl has. Yeah, you have. Um, oh, I like this one. It's less serious, but you know, you coughed or sneezed or something earlier. No, you didn't. You just <laughs> said a Gen Z word and I said Judy. bless you. Who knows? Uh, this came in. Being told bless you or gazoontite after a sneeze isn't just unnecessary. It's actually pretty annoying. No, I think it's actually pretty courteous. I don't think so. Gen Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> God. I think it's stupid. Why? Can you imagine if I said bless you every time you coughed? Yeah, but your heart doesn't skip for a second. Isn't that true? When you sneeze, your heart kind of. I'm not a everything, doctor. Like, jumps. I don't. There's a I actually, know. I bet you there's a, a stereotype or whatever. Like the uh, things yeah, I, I think it was at. like it, they thought oh, hiccups you. and sneezes were the demons coming. Yes, out. that's exactly what it is. Sorry, yeah. here we go. I'm backtracking because I was wrong, but now you're right. It was the demon being expelled from your body, and so they say bless you, or maybe it was an opportunity for the, them to come into your body, and so they would say bless you to hope that you would. Either way, we can all agree that's not what's happening, right? No, but it's just this a kind is just thing. a physiological. Just response. a kind. It's just a kind thing. But it's ridiculous. to be acknowledged. <laughs> In that moment when you sneeze and you say, bless you. What if you're you. a raging introvert and you're like, please don't sneeze. I don't just don't want any to. And then you sneeze and everyone's like, huh? bless you. Not everybody does it anymore, though. We were just hanging out with people that like both people sneezed and nobody said bless you except for me and Brooklyn. But that's true. Where yeah. was that? Whitney and John's house. Oh, yeah. You guys. 
Big news. Breaking news. Hot off the press. We co-parented this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we did it, guys. Our daughter wanted to do a Harry Potter movie night with all the parents, all four of us. Yep. So we did it. We went over to their house. Don't wow. get me wrong. I looked into how much it would cost just to rent an entire theater rather than do that. It was fine. It was lovely. Time. They're very nice people. We had a good time. But it was the first time we've sat at either of our residents and just watched a movie. But they're lovely. It's okay. I'm just grateful. SB originally sat on like a couch that was like sideways to the TV. And he made me go over there and sit with him. And I was like, why are we sitting over here? And then finally he got up and went to the other couch. But I was like, I, didn't already... wanna, I don't know. There was an, a solo couch for like two people. I was like, this is probably where we should sit. No, but I was already sitting on the other couch with Brooklyn who was like, yeah, you can sit like, here, mommy. Over. And I was like, come over here. Come over. Couldn't even see the TV from there. I'd be leaning the whole time. You've seen Harry Potter too, like a thousand times. And what'd you something to do? Sit on that couch for two hours, like side eyeing the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so grateful we moved. I was like, gosh. But plus all the snacks were over there. I was like, God, you took me so far away from all the snacks. What am I <laughs> supposed to what do this for is the really whole about. movie? Let's not bury the lead here. Yeah. It was about the snacks. Yeah, a hundred percent. We did buy some. I didn't have a place to put my drink snacks. down. I was like, goodness. Yeah. Well, thanks for rolling with it. We moved over. We did. It was a good time. But, but that was a big thing. You know, we've we've had dinners and different things like that with them, but never just like at hung someone's out house. At someone's <laughs> house. Yeah. Big steps. Brooklyn was so happy. It was like her dream. Yeah. So that's what it's all about. It's trying to make life a little bit less sucky for your kids. At least yeah. that's what I find just meaning in. Why we're going to Disneyland this week. Woo! That is true. Well, since we're talking about that, we could have talked about the bless you thing for longer, but it's time to wrap it up and talk about Disneyland. Because like I said earlier, I'm working at D23. Come say hey if you're there at night. But you guys are coming down to go to... Le Disney Lawn. Yeah, we are. We're very. Ex- she's very excited about it. We have matching shirts, matching socks. We have our Disney ears or Mickey ears. We're gonna have a blast. If you want to see what that looks like, you can go on our Instagram at it's hardly working. Because <laughs> I guess I'll post it there. Well, it's like we wouldn't probably post it on our TikTok, but we might post it on our stories. And yeah, you can look at both. Yeah. It's Anywho. Been a weird time for content. But yeah, so we got that coming up. You're going to be at Disney for Three multiple days, days mm-hmm. having a great, great time. And then we'll be meeting up with the parents again. Well, you will. You'll be getting dinner yeah, with them, yeah. with the good. co-parents, because then it's vacation time for the B-girl. She's going to Hawaii. Yeah. It's going to have a blast, and we're going to be here watching Deadpool and Borderlands 3. Wish us luck. Oh, man, yeah. Wish us luck on Borderlands 3. We'll give a review. Don't worry. Borderlands 3. <laughs> the Borderlands movie. Did I say Borderlands 3? Yeah, we'll be playing Borderlands oh, I'm sorry. 3. Yeah, hoping that the Borderlands movie would be as good. It's not going to be. It's not going to. But that's okay. We can be a little bit hopeful. Um, but yeah. It's good times. And yeah, we're just busy. Busy, busy, busy. Hopefully going out to drinks with Scott next week. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. cool. Very cool. Well, if that happens, we'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> but until then, we hope you have a wonderful week. A great, great time. That uh, your summer's been going awesome. That you've been feeling hot and staying cool. Yeah, I was going to say something like that. I know. I wasn't super happy with what I came up with, but it was on the fly, baby. Okay. Improv. We'll do it live. And we hope that you spend most of your time hardly working. Bye. Bye.